Hello everyone, this is Pierre Mirles from the Humanitarian OpenStreetMap team, HOT in short. You can find out more about HOT under www.hotosm.org. This uh, tutorial is for beginner mappers and the topic today is going to be mapping flood affected areas in Nepal in the summer of 2017. I will assume that you already have an OSM account and that you have linked that account to the OSM tasking manager that we're on right now. Uh, I will point out to one very useful website for this exercise that you might want to look at before you actually start mapping. And uh, this useful website is the wiki page, wiki.openstreetmap.org. I'll put a reference of that website in the comments of this tutorial. Now, what I'd like you to do is to go in the OSM tasking manager, type tasks.hotosm.org. In the project search, type Nepal and then click enter. You'll be presented with the latest projects uh, in respect to Nepal. At the time of this recording, you can see we have projects 3406, 3405, 3404, and some of those projects have already been almost completed. In, the, in this case here, 3404, 98% completed, and I see that there are still three mappers that are actively working on this project. So let's scroll down and find another project that hasn't been really worked on. Uh, and let's look at 3403, mapping flood affected community in Nepal, in the Morang district. That sounds exciting. So let's click on this one and find out a little more. I encourage you to read the description of what this task is all about to read the instructions. In this case, we're asked to map roads, buildings, waterways, and open areas. Here you'll find some useful links. So do click on those and find out more about the tasking exercise. Then I would like you to click on contribute. This will allow us to select one of those little squares. See on the right side of the screen, we do have the mapping area that we're asked to contribute to, which is split into some small squares. With the wheel of my mouse, I'm gonna zoom in, and I can see that those squares are either orange, which means they're done by uh, a mapper. Uh, if they're, they don't have any color, well, those are still to be mapped. And when they're green, well, they have been mapped so they have been orange in the past but uh, another mapper came in and validated those maps as being accurate so there's no more work to be done on those uh, there are some of those squares that have an orange uh, line around them that means that they're currently activated somebody is working on those so i cannot access them if i select one of those squares so let's just pick one okay this one sounds good uh, I can see that this square is fairly big. There are big squares and smaller squares. So if I say that I want to start mapping on this one, this is a large square. I'm very ambitious. I'm thinking I can complete everything. Let's uh, click start mapping. Before that, I can see that it's been uh, mapped by a few other mappers that have not completed the task. So I'm going to start mapping this task and I will want to click edit with the ID editor. If I click here, I can see that there are many different editors which are for more advanced users. For beginners, really, you wanna go with the ID editor. Now, one other thing is before I click on edit with the ID editor, I can split the task. I'm thinking maybe the square is a bit too big for me to tackle in one go. I have limited time, so I'm gonna go ahead and split this task. Are you sure you wanna split this task? Yes, I am. Okay, now the task has been split into four. Let me just select one piece and this little square here. I'll want to start mapping this square. And of course, I want to start mapping it in the ID editor. The ID editor opens up and uh, I will want to click on this red uh, cross and look at the space that I've been assigned to. With the wheel of my mouse, I can zoom in and off the bat, I can see that there's already been some contributions. Some areas here have been mapped. If I click on them, I see that they've been mapped as a residential area. If I click here on this one, 
I can see it's a waterway, it's a river. Somebody's identified those as a river. Okay, now let me zoom in. And as I zoom in on the image, I can see there are houses, and those houses haven't been mapped yet. Before I go and start mapping, let me uh, walk you through the menu on the right. I can zoom in or zoom out by clicking on those two controls. I do not want to click on this control because this will show you my location. And my location is secret. It's where I live. So let's not focus on that. Uh, we want to look at the background settings. In the background settings, I can go and make the picture uh, less bright or more bright. I usually map with 100% brightness. I also have some background images. So here I'm using Bing Aerial Imagery. I could also select a Digital Globe Premium Imagery. Well, that looks pretty good. And Digital Globe Standard Imagery. So you have different choices. Let's go with Digital Globe Premium Imagery. I like this one. Okay. And now if I um, take this one, I'm not going to use this, so do not bother too much about it if you're a beginner mapper. Uh, this one is quite useful. It's uh, the help, and in I'll let you explore those different menus, but here you'll have a lot of information of the different tasks uh, that you're about to accomplish. All right, let's go back to mapping, and uh, there are really three things that, if you recall, we were asked to do. One is to map buildings, second is to map roads, and third is to map waterways. Here on the right, I do see some uh, buildings, so let me jump in. In this residential area there are a few buildings let me select here the area tool and i'm going to draw around the building four corners and double click to finish okay now that i have this area selected there's one thing i want to do i'm going to right click on it and i want to or targetalize it or to square it uh, buildings have square corners, rectangle corners. Okay, Even if they don't appear so exactly on the picture, let's assume that most buildings have rectangle corners. The second thing I need to do is to go and say to OpenStreetMap that this is a building. Let me click on building and I will select building. I'm not sure if it's a house or a building, but the default is building. Now I've selected it as a building, and you, as you can see here, I've got one edit that's been recorded. Okay, now I need to do the other building. So let me zoom in, and I'll click here area, and I'm going to be careful not to touch the other building. Each building in OpenStreetMap must be separate from one another, even if in real life they touch each other. This is for OpenStreetMap to really understand that those are two separate instances, two separate buildings. Double click to finish. And of course here you see on the left side, uh, it's registered that I've got this dot uh, that's blinking. So they, it, it thinks that I want to register a dot. I don't want to register a dot. What I want to do is to register the square that I've drawn. I want to say that it's a building like the previous one. I'm going to right click on it and say I want to square it. Here I've got two buildings, they're not touching each other and both have been squared. Okay, let's move to another task. If I was to, there's no other river, if I was to say there's a river here that goes through this field, well I would select the line here and I would draw along the river. Double click to finish and then I would say it's a water feature and I would select river. Now, obviously there's no river here. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna delete it. And here, my fake river is now gone. Thank God. All right, so the next thing that we want to do is to look at roads. Let's see if there's a road that we can map. I'm gonna scroll back. And most roads have already been mapped. Huh, I can see a path here. I can see a road. So let me here click on the line. Let me connect my road to one existing road. Here I can see that the road starts from here. And I'm going to follow the path of the road. I'm not sure what this road is and how to connect.
categorize it, double click to finish. Of course, I'd need to continue the road, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just gonna finish, finish it there. And I am gonna say that this is a road. What type of road? Well, I'm thinking this is, let me scroll down. It's a non-roan road. That's what I think it is. Okay, it is now a non-roan road. It could be a primary, a secondary, a tertiary road. It could be a path. It could be a track. Here, in this case, I'm going to call it unknown road because I'm not sure exactly of what this road is. Let me scroll down a little bit in this map and see this could be a residential road because it goes by residential areas. I'm just going to call it unknown road for now. Okay, so we've looked at how to map houses. We've looked at how to map a river even though there was no river but you've understood the principle and you've seen how to map uh, a road once you've completed your task you need to save your work and uh, it will ask are you ready to upload yes i'm ready to upload and i would like someone to review my edits well likely but the tasking manager will do that for now so i'm not going to click here i'm just going to click upload upload to OpenStreetMap and it's uploading the changes to OpenStreetMap. And once those changes have been done and uploaded, now it's online. Everybody can see those changes in OpenStreetMap. Going back to the tasking manager. Now, have I done this whole square, this whole task? Have I completed this whole task? Well, no, because as you could see, there were still some uh, buildings to be mapped. So I'm going to leave that as uh, not completed for the next mapper to complete this task. So I'm going to stop mapping and now uh, I could um, well maybe leave a comment or not leave a comment for the next mapper. I'm going to decide not to leave a comment right now but I could uh, to give guidance to the next mapper like hey there's still many houses, many buildings to be mapped. I hope this was useful. Do look at my other tutorials. They'll give you more information, different perspective on different tasks. Every tile is different. Every tile looks at different aspect of the geography. Nepal is pretty big and the rest of the world is pretty big. So it's a, an exciting task to map in OpenStreetMap. It's an exci exciting task to put a house, a building on the map because ultimately this is going to help the relief organization on the ground understand where families do live, where houses exist, where roads exist, and uh, ultimately help out a population in need. Have some fun. Don't forget to have some fun in the exercise and uh, do leave me some comments. Put a thumbs up on this video. Looking forward to seeing you on my next tutorial.